thank you so much for joining us here at the NASDAQ market site for a panel on the reconstitution of the Russell Index. It's this on the last day of the reconstitution. And joining us for the panel is Mike Sokol, uh, the Senior Managing Director here at the NASDAQ Market Intelligence Desk, Matt Lystra, the Senior Research Analyst at the FTSE Russell Indexes, and lastly, but not least, Russell Rhodes, the Director of Education uh, at the CBOE Option in Options Institute at CBOE in Chicago here today in New York. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Matt, let's kick it off with you. Could sure. you tell us a little bit about exactly what the, cre the reconstitution is, what the process is, how it works, why it's important to investors? The reconstitution really is our process of realigning stocks based on their characteristics. So during the year, and certainly on a day like today, we're seeing that stocks you know, either expand or contract during the year. And so we want to capture those movements and reclassify them where appropriate to either moving some small cap stocks that are, are moving into the large cap space or maybe some large caps that have had a tougher time and contracted and need to move down into the smaller space. And then maybe most importantly, we want to capture the new opportunities that are coming into the Russell 2000 index, for example, which is a, the index that covers U.S. small cap companies and and. A lot of people think of the Russell 2 as, as really capturing the future growth potential of markets. And then I, I think uh, a final point I'd make is that, like you see uh, on the board behind us here at NASDAQ today, uh, indexes can, can be summarized into a single return data point. But if you reverse engineer back from that, for us, it's a, it's a process of months of research mm -hmm. at the company levels and making sure that we're, we're getting that work done right and looking at where a company should be assigned to its home country. Maybe it belongs in the U.S., maybe it belongs in Great Britain or somewhere else in the world. And we need to have all those questions answered and get those right to get the, the resulting signal, that return that the investors are seeing correct at the end of the day. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you know, that, that brings up the question, roughly how many stocks, how many companies are affected by this? So globally, we cover about 10,000. In the U.S., which is, is most of the focus today, um, there are 3,000 stocks in the Russell 3000 index. And then underneath that are the most widely followed Russell 1000 large cap companies and Russell 2000 index of small cap companies. So that's, that's roughly what we're looking at today as, as far as the numbers of companies that are impacted. Wow, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. So, Russell, this is, of course, a historic day for other reasons beyond the reconstitution with the, uh, the Brexit and the referendum vote for the U.K. to leave uh, the EU. You are, of course, a specialist in volatility. Please share your thoughts. Well, it's, it's an interesting day with respect to just volatility across the board, but one of the things that I had looked at historically with respect to the Russell 2000 was how that index, uh, how people that trade options on that index prepare for the reconstitution or... I guess, react in front of the reconstitution. And we actually have a volatility index that is based on the Russell 2000, the CBOE Russell 2000 volatility index, uh, tickers RVX. And there are two things that I've, I've looked at uh, over the past few years when we've been working with the people from FTSE Russell. Uh, what does the implied volatility of the options on the Russell 2000 look like around the recon process? And then how does it look relative to large cap volatility, which is measure, measured by VIX? Uh, the, the volatility or expected volatility for the Russell 2000 is it's kind of like right in the middle um, of the range that, that we've seen historically. And then when you look at it relative to large cap volatility, even though there are lots of underlying changes going on in the Russell 2000, it's actually the lowest, June is actually the lowest risk month for the Russell 2000 relative to uh, larger cap stocks over the last 15 years or so. Any thoughts in general on volatility overall relative to what we've seen now with the Brexit and all the volatility in the global markets um, sort of outside of the reconstitution? Well, just outside of the reconstitution, it was, it was really interesting to watch VIX overnight. Um, I even, I even tweeted, tweeted a picture from Bloomberg where they were showing the July VIX futures last night about 11 o'clock. Um, and, and we heard a lot of chatter. Uh, leading up to the official market open that volatility, the volatility indexes weren't high enough relative to what was going on with Brexit. And uh, lo and behold, the, the mar broad based market indexes aren't down nearly as much as they were in the overnight market. So mm. uh, I think the volatility indexes uh, made a, it's called a panic or a, a fear index. 
and it just wasn't displaying as much fear as people thought it should, and that's resulted in the market not being down as much as people thought it would be. That's an interesting point, an interesting convergence around a divergence that stood out to so many this mm -hmm. year. Mike, what about volume? What are you seeing? Is it more than you had anticipated today? And, yeah. and you know, sort of separating from the reconstitution then also with what's happening with the Brexit? Yeah, I mean, today the first half hour was double the normal volume. I wow. would attribute that more to the Brexit vote than to anything going on necessarily with Russell. Um, Russell Fridays tend to be pretty normal days right up until the end, and then that last little bit of trading and the last uh, bit hitting into the close is where you see all that volume. So. And why is that right into the close? Well, the, the index funds themselves, they want to track uh, the, the index, so they want to get that closing price of the day, so they're not necessarily trading throughout the day um, or, or even into the days leading up to the, the, the reconstitution. So it's really at the closing uh, price that you get that, and NASDAQ has a closing cross that helps organize that, and that's, um, that's where we see the big action. Gotcha. So, you know, overall, um, Matt, what are some of the, I guess, the most notable updates to the indexes, indexes expected for this year's Russell rebalance? Yeah, I, I, to Mike's point, um, Russell enjoys about an uh, $800 billion following uh, passively, which means those funds that are, are really, um, you know, most attached to the changes that we're going to make today and, and ultimately will have to follow them to track the indexes appropriately. So there's a, you know, a sizable following there. And then beyond that, there's you know, another 5.2 trillion in actively managed assets that are benchmarked to our indexes. So that's part of the underpinnings of the significance um, of the event. As far as notable changes for this year, you know, my take is, as I looked at the changes this year, because we see companies move up and down in and out year over year. But for me this year, my takeaway was it's almost an affirmation of what we've talked about for 30 years, where this transition into the information age. Hmm. So this year among the, the top 10, five of them are big technology stocks. And this year the big movers were Facebook and Amazon, which were out of the top 10 and now have moved in. And so I think that you, you know, you've seen this, this real shift from you know, a, a former manufacturing industrial economy to technology. And I think we have a sense that that's happened. I mm -hmm. mean, we're all carrying around our smartphones and, and your, your beautiful board here <laughs> is a, a good example of that. Uh, and yet, uh, I think that something like reconstitution is a great way to put an empirical point on that change. And, and that's what you see this year, I think. And out of curiosity, if Amazon and Facebook moved into the top 10, what fell out? Yeah, I think we saw this year Pfizer fall out. Okay. And, and I think one or two of the big banks, um, JP Morgan, I think, was one that slid. So you've, you know, you've seen some of those, uh, a couple of those pharmaceutical and bank stocks that have fallen out in favor of, of again, a couple of the tech stocks. And in terms of volatility between small caps and large caps, you know, that now that we're breaking it out a little bit that way, is there are there any distinguishing factors uh, that investors watch for that you watch for that you can tell us about? Well, I, I really do like to look at, at RVX versus VIX. I think uh, looking at any volatility measure in a vacuum, you're doing yourself somewhat of a disservice. Uh, what's really interesting is on a day like this, uh, that that even though you know all volatility seems to be higher. Uh, the, uh, the, the volatility of Russell 2000 our index options is actually about half of its normal level going into the reconstitution this afternoon. Why is that? Relative or, to VIX. Or why would you think that is, at least? Uh, well, part of it has to do with uh, VIX being thought of as uh, kind of a macro mm -hmm. risk indicator, so mm -hmm. it's up. Right. But you know, the RVX is, is you know, not up nearly as much as VIX is today. Now, to, uh, to Mike's point of saying that there could be more volume toward the end of the day, more action right toward mm -hmm. the end of the day, would you expect to see a little more volatility to match that at the end of the day as well? Or do you think that we've just sort of seen the level of volatility that we're going to see around this reconstitution? Around the reconstitution. It, it, there's not a lot of excess volatility. It's, it's amazing to me, because mm -hmm. I'm not involved in it operationally like these guys are, but it's amazing to me how smooth the process appears to be. It's just you know, a lot of stocks changing hands at the very end of the day and not really causing much of a change to any of the indexes or excess volatility at the end of the day. It sounds very ideal. Kudos. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and maybe some of that is caused by, you, you see this a lot, this dichotomy between small cap stocks kind of leading in and out of a risk on, risk off environment. But it, I mm -hmm. think then investors tend to pause and say, well, these are U.S. small cap companies in the case of the Russell 2000. What, what 
exposure specifically do they have to the UK? And so mm. when you think about the top end of the Russell 1000 index where you're getting bigger multinational companies that maybe do have some exposure, the, the small caps tend to be more US focused and, and maybe as the day goes on, you're seeing some parsing of that. Interesting point, interesting yeah. point. Yeah. And lastly, Mike, can you tell us a little bit or tell us what happens with the quote closing cross at the NASDAQ later today? Sure, Will, and, and picking up on the volatility point, uh, there's about maybe 3,200 companies or so, rough numbers, that are going to have some related activity today. Um, probably 1,200 of those are going to trade their full day's volume in one trade, which is wow. quite a bit of trading, and, and 200 or so plus will have 10 times average volume. Wow. Um, so figure that times, you know, normal volume times 10 all in one trade. Mm -hmm. A lot of trading going on, and somehow it all works out uh, you know, as, the, as the points were made. A lot of that is organized by the closing cross, which is available in every stock every day. It's not special for uh, any index rebalance. But the idea was just to bring together all the buyers and sellers and print the trade at one price, as opposed to just turning off a stopwatch and saying, okay, who was last, you know, gets to set the last price. And so we're bringing in buyers and sellers. Uh, folks throughout the day can put on uh, what they call market on close or limit on close orders. And the idea is that everybody gets organized. If there's an imbalance, there's a chance to offset those imbalances. And the idea is that right at four o'clock, you print one trade, everybody knows what that price is. Um, so going back a dozen years, Russell uh, has used the closing cross uh, for that purpose. This will be 13 years in a row. And last year, we saw $21.1 billion happen in four-tenths of a second. All wow, yeah. that's so, incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. This was really a great discussion. Really appreciate it. Mike Sokol here of the Market Intelligence Desk at the NASDAQ. Matt Leistra of the FTSE Russell Indexes and Russell Rhodes of the Options Institute at the CBOE. Thank you again. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today.